Hey, thanks for joining me. In today's video, we're going to take a look at another e-bike, and this time it's going to be the Ingway uh, X20. Now, I've, I've reviewed an Ingway bike before. It was the M20. It kind of looks a little bit more like a kind of like an electric mini bike of sorts. Uh, I'll put a link up there if you want to go check that out. But the X20 is very different. The X20 has some of the same kind of uh, motor bike features. It's got these 20 by 4 fat tires, uh, but it also is foldable, so you can kind of snap it in half here on this hinge. You can remove the battery. You can fold it up and put it up in a uh, small car or a small hatchback. Now, the X20 does have front suspension that is uh, adjustable, and you can also turn it off, by the way, if you want to for some reason. It's got a rear suspension here, which is very cool looking, but also very functional. And it's got a suspension here in the middle, so it's got three different suspension points, which is pretty cool. Now, it's got a hub drive. It is not a mid-drive up here. It's a hub drive. 750-watt motor. Um, continuous rated. I think it's a 1000 kind of peak rated motor, but it's basically a 750 watt hub drive motor. And, uh, and we're going to take it out and find out how well it performs, see what it looks like getting it out of the box, uh, and then uh, just kind of talk about what it's like to ride the thing. How this particular e-bike works is with a cadence sensor, which is what helps keep the cost down. Because the other option would be a torque sensor, where it actually measures how much effort you're putting into the pedaling. And that's a much more uh, expensive technology. Let me go ahead and take the assist mode up high for this hill so I can maintain speed. You can see the gauge coming in. So what cadence sensor does is it really just detects whether you're pedaling or not. So as soon as I stop pedaling, you'll see the assist goes off. And as soon as I start pedaling, provided my speed is within that current assist mode power threshold, it'll come back in. Just like it's doing right now. And what I like about this bike, as you'll see a little bit when we get into the menu settings, is you can completely configure what percentage of the overall power you want to allocate for each assist mode one through five and that basically caps your top speed so the assist mode detects first if you're pedaling and then it looks to see if you are under the speed threshold or power threshold of that particular mode and i can see how much power i'm drawing by clicking there on the i button here and you'll see in the middle it shows me the power which is nothing right now, but you can see it coming back on a little bit. And as I go up this hill, you'll see it crank up significantly, especially if I let my speed drop, it'll start helping me out. But I really like the fact that I can go in and configure exactly what power contribution I want out of each of these assist modes. So coming up to some level ground here. So just to kind of show you, let me drop down to mode one. And again, this is completely configurable. So you can use the pedal assist mode or you can use the throttle, which is right here on the left handlebar. So if I press the throttle down in mode one, I've got very little power actually set up assigned for mode one. So we're not really getting anything right now on mode one. In fact, I might want to change that in the menu. If I switch to pedal assist two and hit the throttle, you can see it jumped me up and then it drops back down once I hit around nine miles an hour. But if I up it to mode three, you'll see I can go now faster than nine miles an hour. It's gonna take me up to about 13. And of course mode four, 
take me a little bit faster and I'm not pedaling at all I'm just letting the motor do full throttle using throttle mode so I can get just about 17 out of mode 4 and then on mode 5 will take me I think I've got that set to 100% so I'll get a little over 20 miles an hour on mode 5 on level ground like so and then you see the power start to drop off a little bit I do like the fact that this has an 8-speed Shimano gear setup so gear shifts are nice and smooth and with 8 speeds on this particular uh, gear diameter I'm able to maintain 20 miles an hour with a very comfortable modest pace of pedaling I don't I don't feel like a hamster going crazy on a hamster wheel this is very sustainable I really like this uh, gearing setup so quite happy with that so the way I've got it set up right now since I can get about 13 miles an hour on mode 3 if I have it set on mode 3 if I'm below 13 miles an hour and I start pedaling assist will automatically kick in I'm pedaling now and assist came in slightly and I already hit the threshold which is about 13 so you can see the power dropped off as soon as I crested 13 miles an hour so it's pretty simple logic now you contrast that to something like the torque sensor which is actually going to monitor how much effort you're actually pedaling with and it does a, a bunch you know like a thousand samples a second to determine how much effort you're pedaling with how much force is on that crank and then it determines the power assist the more effort you're putting in the more the motor comes in to help you out <clears throat> it's a little bit more of a smoother experience but you pay a lot more for that technology now since this bike is a cadence sensor like i said it is going to be less expensive by a pretty fair margin versus a torque sensor based setup but everything else about this bike is very premium you know the gear shifts I, the display obviously you know the rubberized buttons here to give it some uh degree of weather resistance the fact that it's got leather stitched handles and seats everything else about this bike feels premium despite the fact that it's not an expensive bike all right so you can see i'm just cruising just kind of gliding here at four miles an hour three miles an hour if i start pedaling since i am in assist mode three power meter jumps up and it'll boost me up to whatever that top speed is for that particular assist mode so without regard to how you know how much i'm actually pedaling so it can have a little bit of an on and off feel but that's a trade-off that you make uh, to save a pretty substantial amount of money on an e-bike so the cost of entry is a lot lower on these cadence assist but how i like to use these is when i get to a hill I'll bump up the assist mode at that point to help me get up that hill and I might gear down a little bit just so I don't have to pedal quite as hard and I'll tell you it makes you feel like you've got bionic legs <laughs> Superman legs because all of a sudden you're not really exerting yourself the way that you traditionally would when you have to gear down and then just pedal hard to get up a big hill so my knees just uh, don't like that anymore and I really appreciate uh, how enjoyable e-bike makes the bicycling experience, especially when you've got some hills to contend with. Now, the other thing I like about these e-bikes is the ability to throttle start. So let's say I forgot to gear down, <laughs> as is often the case with e-bikes. Sometimes you don't realize that you're in top gear. So I'm in like gear seven, I think, seven or eight. And uh, I'm at a start. So right now, if I were to pedal start this, it's a bit of a bear because I'm in... A very high gear right and then the motor comes in to help me right away but even short of that you can do a throttle start since it does have a throttle right and you can just without pedaling just hit the throttle it'll take you up and then you start pedaling and then if you want to gear down you can do that and you're off to the races and I'm not tearing up my knees super nice all right enough of this 10 mile an hour stuff <laughs> I'm in normal mode which is what comes up by default when you power the bike on there's eco mode which basically takes 
your power sets, how much power you apply to each assist mode. And it kind of dumbs it down to lower the amount of torque that you're, or demand you're putting on the motor to extend your battery life. But there's also a sport mode. And you can get that by long pressing the I button over here. But you can only run it in sport, which actually increases the amount of power. And we'll see that uh, down here on the power meter. But you can only use that for a limited period of time. And after you use it, when you switch out of that mode, or if it times out on you and goes back to normal, you have to wait 10 minutes before you can use it again. And it will drain your battery more quickly because you're obviously using more power. But you'll notice a fairly significant difference, very tangible difference in uh, just how much uh, acceleration you have and in your top speed because you're, uh, it's allowing you to tap into uh, to more power off the motor than it does by default. So let's go ahead and switch that over by holding the long, long press in the eye. And now it's red and shows sport mode. So let me go ahead and throttle start this. And let's just see what, what happens when we get there. I'm in mode four right now. Oh, what the heck, let's go to mode five. All right, let's go ahead and start this. I get full power and a lot more acceleration than I normally get. Pulling about a thousand watts. And it comes in to help me with that hill, which is very much appreciated. Tell you what, sport mode is a lot of fun. So you're not going to get the range that you will out of eco or normal mode. So even at 25 miles an hour, the motor is still helping me. Yeah, that would not happen in normal mode. Now, this doesn't use a traditional seat post, as you can see. It's got its own sort of proprietary shaped, really heavy duty seat post. But it is uh, fairly easy to adjust because it does give you a key here that you put in there and the little pin pops up. And when that pin pops up, it releases this lever that you then pull back and then you can easily height adjust. And I'll put up here on screen what the minimum and maximum seat heights are. But I do like the fact that you can lock that down. And of course, there's a little set screw back here that you can, or a tension screw that you can tighten that so it doesn't slip on you. Uh, by default, when it ships, it's a little bit loose and it'll slip on you over time. So you wanna tighten that back up so when you crank that lever down, it does kind of lock that post into place and it does work perfectly fine once you do that so even though it took me a little while to figure that out but uh yeah and up here on the front suspension you can actually lock out the suspension if you want to or you can turn it back on and then over here you have a uh, preload dial so you can up or down on how much uh, cushion you want up front i don't think there's any adjustment on this uh, shock right here and then of course back here the x20 has these really cool looking uh, spring suspension in the back as you can see it uses the tourney tx derailleur all right before we wrap up let's uh jump over real quick and just do a quick time lapse so you can see what assembly was like when you get this thing out of the box Took me a little over 40 minutes to uh, assemble this thing. It comes about 70% assembled, I would say. Uh, the other thing is that uh, this guy, whoops, this guy right here, I'm looking for a connector for this. Oh, and I just found it, it's right behind the seat. The manual doesn't tell you where to connect this cable. And I was like, where does this thing go anyway? It actually goes right back here behind the seat post. So it's like you get two keys. You get one key that allows you to uh, sort of unlock the folding part and then another key that allows you to uh, lock the battery in place. So two different keys for this bike. All right, as you saw, tons of foam protectors to keep all this powder coated black metal from getting scratched. So that's very nice. Yeah, so far I'm uh, pretty impressed with how Ingwe packed this. I thought the assembly instructions were pretty decent as far as assembly instructions go. 
And if I had one recommendation, I would say uh, a little bit more of a close up on some of the little bolt connections would have been helpful. Now, I also do like these uh, leather seat covers, uh, both on the back here and uh, on the main seat, and then also on the handlebar. So they've got uh, leather covers here, stitched leather here on the bottom on the handlebars. And these are really comfortable and kind of really high quality feeling. So this is the first bike that I've had that uh, that has that. I think it's a kind of a nice touch. All right, the controls are pretty straightforward. You got your power button here. This turns on your lights, uh, minus and plus for navigating the menu. In the middle kind of just switches through a couple different modes. And then of course you got your throttle right down here. So to turn the bike on, all you got to do is uh, press and hold the power button. See the uh, Ingway logo boots up and you come up to uh, basically zero, mode zero, or pedal assist mode zero. And you can also see we're in normal, right, which is also designated here by this blue line at the top. Now, if you increment this, you can go from pedal assist one, two, three, four, and five, and then take that down. Now, I actually almost sent this bike back because I just wasn't happy with the, the way the assist worked, but as a, after I did a little investigation and actually read the manual, go figure, uh, I found out that there's actually some very cool modes in here. So to get to those modes, you press and hold the plus and the minus together, and it takes you to the setup screen. Uh, I'm going to go into, into setup. This is where you can set whether you're using metric or imperial distance units, so kilometers or miles. You can set the brightness of the display and you know what the timer is for auto powering off the bike. Uh, once you stop moving, so if you get off the bike somewhere and you just kind of walk away from it for a moment. Uh, after five minutes, I've got it set to automatically shut off and then go back to the other menu. Now to get into some of the more interesting stuff, you go into personalization. And this is where I turned this bike from something that I really was not enjoying to something that actually was quite a lot of fun. So if I go into personalization, you can have the headlight automatically come on when you power up. Uh, or not, so you can decide how you like that. And under the power set, this is where I was actually able to solve my issue. So if I go into power set, you've got a multiple uh, set of power modes that you can choose from. So if I press the I key to go enter, right? now I can increment up and down different power sets. All right? so, and basically, the one that really makes sense here is P1 through 5, because there are uh, five PAS settings. But the main takeaway here is that you can actually customize how the PAS modes work, how much power you get in each one, and uh, and then it, I think it, you can tailor it to your liking. So I, I really am pleased that they gave you that capability. Now, if you do want to switch from normal mode, which is the, what it comes up to by default, you can long press I and switch to sport mode. Now, if you short press the I, you can page through. Right now we're on total distance. You can go through, it's my trip distance, power. You can set a trip timer. Um, what? monitor what your max speed and what your average speed was, and then back to total distance. So that's kind of the whole cycle there. So it's nice to give you a whole variety of uh, bits of information that you can tap into, and I, I really do like this. Now, um, this little bar here, as you may have seen in some of the clips, this is actually showing you how much um, motor assist uh, is actually being applied. So if you're all the way max, the motor is giving you is its uh, highest level of, of uh, assist, it's kind of like a tachometer of sorts, only really it's just representing motor power. So that's the menu system. I think it's pretty cool. Wow, the weather really has changed in the uh, several weeks that I've been working with this X20. Let's talk about some of the other specs. As I mentioned, it does have a 750 watt uh, continuous rated motor with a peak of about 1000 watts. And we saw that on some of the clips in the power draw setting on that display. Now this is, as I said, the X20 and, but there is, uh, Engwe actually has an X24 and an X26. And uh, for, I think, starting today that I'm releasing this video, uh, October 16th through, I think, October 26th. I'll put that on screen if I need to correct myself here. Uh, but they are running a special launch event for their new X series. So that includes the 20, the X24, and the also the X26. Now, the, the numbers there kind of refer to the diameters of these tires. So the X20 has four by 20 fat tires. The 24 has four by 24 and the 26 has 26 inch, four inch tat, uh, fat tires. So it's kind of where that comes into play, but they are a little bit different. They have a similar body design. Uh, this one has the foldable uh, drop down handles so as a much or uh, handlebar post. 
The X24 and the 26 have a more traditional sort of motocross style uh, handlebar setup, as you'll see if you want to go check out the website. And by the way, there are links in the description below per usual to all this stuff. Uh, but they do, during this launch event, have a special launch event pricing available. So if you want to find out what that is, again, check it out in the links. Now, in terms of range, uh, on this particular one, again, this is the, uh, I guess, the shortest range of the X series versus the X24 and the X26. Those have longer ranges. Ingway says that you can get on electric only on this particular X20 about 47 miles. I think that's pretty pie in the sky numbers. I don't think that's realistic for most people. I think to meet that, you would have to have a specific fairly low weight requirement, level ground, maybe the wind at your back um, in order to attain that. I think a more realistic uh, range on electric only, so throttle only, uh, for somebody who's maybe roughly my size, so just about 200 pounds. I do think a more realistic range uh, on motor assist is probably somewhere between 20 and 30 miles for somebody who's, you know, not 100 pounds. Now, if you're willing to pedal uh, a fair amount, you can get a lot more range. So again, Engway says you can get something like 90 miles or so range uh, in if you're using pedal assist mode. Now that's using minimal assist, and again on flat ground, wind at your back uh, with a very lightweight rider. But I think again, a, and by the way, depending on the conditions, uh, your tire inflation, uh, whether you do throttle starts or pedal starts, all these things will affect uh, your battery range. And the range is a little bit uh, more on the 26 and the X24, so the other models than it is on the X20. But I think, again, I think the realistic range that you could expect out of normal mixed mode use, so where you're doing some of the pedaling, you have some hills, you're also using some assist, maybe you've got some weak knees, so you're gonna use assist a little bit more on those hills. Again, I think you can easily get 30 to maybe 50 miles of range uh, or more, depending on uh, one of those variables in your particular circumstance. How much do you weigh? How hilly is the terrain? Uh, are you getting wind in your face? And just how much are you relying on the motor versus how much effort are you willing to put into it? So it's a pretty wide range. I think you have to take those, those polished ranges with a pretty large grain of salt, if you know what I mean. Uh, but I think the, my estimates are, are pretty close to what you could reasonably expect. All right, so I really do like this bike, especially once I got it dialed in in terms of the pedal assist uh, power assignments. Um, I really, <laughs> that made all the difference in the world in this bike. It went from being, I think I'm gonna send this back and not do the video to, yeah, I actually really like this bike. And I think at the price point, especially if they bring it down even lower on the launch event pricing, which I'm not mentioning because I don't know what those numbers are. So again, you have to check those in the links below if you're interested in checking it out. But um, I do think the X20 and the X series in general is very good and definitely worth a consideration. All right, so I think that's about all uh, that I can think of on this bike. So hopefully you found something helpful. If you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up on it. Really appreciate that. Uh, don't forget to check those links below if you wanna find out more information about it. And hey, if you're not already a subscriber, maybe consider subscribing. I got more power station, solar panel, and yes, e-bike and probably some other things coming soon. Gonna be spreading it out a little bit more in terms of the subject matter that I cover, but it still be a heavy focus on portable power and solar. So if those are the topics that you prefer and those are the reasons why you subscribe to the channel, don't worry, those are still gonna be a pretty heavy priority in the content that I produce going forward. So there's that. Anyway, thanks for joining me for this video. I do hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have fun out there.